s'mores in your purses. The show where we talk about mushrooms and other psychedelics you might have on your person and might maybe want to share with us, perhaps. Um, joining me today is my co-host, Kelly. Uh, if you want to come on out, Kelly. <laughs> Did we do it? Did the music happen? Does that, I think so. Was that, did that happen to be a recording of me singing the song? The last oh episode? no, I, for, I forgot it wasn't music. Yeah, that was Paige uh, singing our theme song. So that is our oh. co-host intro until further notice. That's my, that's my <laughs> WWE entrance music. Oh, that's my new favorite thing. Uh, wonderful. I uh, can't see you. Do you want to come on out? Me personally? Uh, yes. If you could drive down to Calgary and get on camera here, that'd be great. You can't see me right now? I cannot. Oh, there we yeah, go. Now yeah, I can. All right. Hell yeah. Um, we are so good at producing. Hell yeah. How's um, producing going, Lily? <laughs> oh, I got a thumbs down. Oh. So I feel like we should explain to the audience. Uh, so last week, uh, for astute viewers, uh, I gave a glowing compliment to our producer, David, in that he, I said he always keeps us on our feet. Mm -hmm. And um, on our feet or on our toes? You know what? Like, it's kind of vacillates between both. It's sometimes on our feet and sometimes on our toes. Right. So and, it's like cat phrases sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, right. Which is, why, which is why I have this desk here, because if people saw my calves, they would just lose their shit. Like mm -hmm. I've right. seen them. It's pretty intense. I, I appreciate that you gave me a warning beforehand. Yeah. And he was having us do hella calf raises last week. And I I was I have to say, I was really worried because I thought, you know what, this week he might not have any more surprises for us. He might not like he might just kind of steady as she goes and just everything will run smoothly and it'll be boring. And you know what? I underestimated him. Uh he absolutely pulled out the change up on us and told me earlier today oh that's right i'm too busy i can't help produce tonight so uh yeah we have a new producer and uh she's so good at technology it's her main thing uh she's nodding sagely as i say this and just for the fourth consecutive week we are absolutely crushing it on the production front uh wouldn't you agree I feel Nicole? Like we need to be, like prop up that banner that says a reminder that david is doing this for free <laughs> Uh, I will correct you that David is not doing it for free. David is in the other room having a staff party. Ah, okay. Oh, is 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 this one of his staff members that, that's producing this for us? Uh, no, this is my partner. Oh, this okay. is the only way I could. I tried to recruit like um, more tech savvy people, and they were like, "Who are you?" And like, the "New phone? Who dis?" And uh, yeah, I didn't go over well, so. It was it, this. It went from "Hey, can I come over to your house after you're done your little your little Wayne's World thing?" and uh, turned into "Hey, you're gonna to uh, operate an entire show." It's and uh, I could not be happier with the results. I yeah, I agree. She's doing a fantastic job. Um, if, yeah, I have no notes. This is great. No notes. That is the theme of this show, mm -hmm. and. <laughs> Yeah. So, so no, no, I, you also, Nicole. I, you're you're perfect. great, uh, and you do great things. Hey, thanks. Uh, I do my best, and I know I'm perfect. But thank you for reiterating. Um, so I know that you have a thing that you wanted to talk about, but Always. before you do, um, I actually have to fulfill a promise to our streamers. Um, yep. that's what we call so, our fans, our streamers. Yeah. Well, specifically our streamers, because. We last week you promised that for every streamer we got that I would write a paragraph of my novel. Oh, did you actually do it? Yeah, absolutely. Holy I prepared. Shit, I love it. Yeah. So last week we had a grand total of three streamers. Um, so I prepared three paragraphs um, and I would love to do a live reading. Um, but actually, love... you know what? Yeah. You know what? Uh, I think like for a live reading, like it feels a little more authentic if I have like an actual audience. So like if we could like bring out, um, maybe I'll introduce our guest and we'll bring yeah. out Josh and then I'll do yeah. the live reading for everyone. Is that, is that acceptable? Is that okay for you? Uh, you're in charge, Nicole. This is your show. Yeah, right. You are totally. the host. 
That's a good point. Yeah, we're going to do that. Um, so today our uh, guest on Spores in Your Purses is James W. Gesso. He is a uh, an author of two books and a podcaster um, called Adventures Through the Mind. Um, he is a psychedelics enthusiast slash advocate slash expert. Um, and his podcast and books, I believe, are about his experiences and the potentials of mind-expanding drugs. Um, so, James, do you want to come on out? How do I... Hello, hello. Hey, <laughs> excellent. Good stage Hi. entrance. That was great. No Huzzah. notes. Yes, I, well, you know, <laughs> I, I was, I, I, was I, I was slightly disappointed. I, I, I thought I was going to get the and or. I got a, I got slashy. Uh, oh, I don't know if I'm a right. slash expert, but I'm an and or, an and or author right. and or uh, advocate and or enthusiast. That's uh, fair. <laughs> Um, now, I, I, did, say, I don't know about if you expert, want to have a I'll, mulligan I'll, I'll there, Nicole. That. We could you could do the intro with the and or, and right as you say his name, uh, our producer, our new producer Lily, can hit the guest intro theme, and we will get to uh, we will get to hear the glory of um, James's entrance music. Okay, let's I have do entrance it. music. Yeah, do it. All Remove right. him. Get him out of here. Kick okay. ass. All right. So, <laughs> so... Yeah, let her. You do her thing. And then navigate your way to guest intro. No, no, it should say guest intro. Move, click the right arrow. No, 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 go back. Remember the right side of the screen, there's an arrow? That's, that's left. Go to your right until it says guest intro. My favorite thing in the world is watching partners explain how to do something to their partners. Oh, and there's the guest intro music. We are killing it again. All right. Well, welcome to our guest, James W. Gesso, podcaster and enthusiast and psych so oh boy. Podcaster and psychedelics enthusiast and or advocate and or expert. Come on out, James. Yeah, bring him up, bring him up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I have no notes. That was seamless. Uh, no notes, but just in case, Nicole, do you want to do like four or five more cracks of that intro and we'll just take the best one in post. Okay, no. sure thing. However, we do have to like wrap this up in like 20 minutes, so maybe we should keep rolling. You're right, you're right. You can in, you can intro anyone else you want. Um, and next up is uh, some guy, his name is jo J Josh. Come on out, Josh. I'm uh I'm glad that you actually understood the Germanic pronunciation of Josh. It's uh, not many people know that, so uh, I think we're we're helping our viewers learn a little bit today. Uh, Josh is our resident GM and uh, general smartass. Um, he's also a beer enthusiast and or hentai enthusiast. Uh, yes, the two <laughs> things that go together best. <laughs> I mean, after a few beers, how can you resist more hentai, right? <laughs> the guy gets me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys gonna, you guys are gonna gel well together this show, I can tell. Uh, <laughs> so now our, now my co-host is missing. Does he want to? Are we playing the co-host music again? Is that what's happening? Okay, we're just gonna keep we're gonna keep doing this live. So uh, why don't you, assume that Kelly can hear you right now and hear the mystical voices of your live reading of your three paragraphs that you wrote last. What are you talking about? I wouldn't miss this for the world. I was gonna say it's pretty disrespectful to not show up for a live reading. There's nothing more embarrassing than going to do a live reading and no one no one shows up. There's no audience. God, that would be like, I don't know, let me make up a completely fake hypothetical. Not showing up for the show you're producing. Like, that would be so rude. Can you imagine? <laughs> I can't even. I'm sure you'll text me back, Kelly. <laughs> okay. Um, so I kind of flip-flop back and forth about whether or not I was going to do this. Um, but I was finally, finally just landed on, you know, I can't keep my art secret forever. It's important to share your work so you can take note, get notes on it. Um, but keep in mind, this is Nicole. Mine. I'm not going to speak about myself in the third person. Um, this is my very first live reading, so please be gentle, be kind. Um, get off the stage. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, actually, could you pan out so that I can see my audience? 
Thank you. Um, it's helpful for my she process. Made one production decision. It was such a good decision. And I was like, yeah, you're doing it. And immediately Nicole just comes in like, no, smacks the ball out of her hand. Well, you did say wow. I'm the host. I'm in control. So this is true. If you could just sorry, shut, it's shut your mouth and be respectful of my work, that'd be great. Yeah, shut I'm your doing mouth. That. Shut your goddamn mouth. Great. Okay. So be gentle. Please hold your feedback to the end. Again, my first time. <clears throat> The ogre's breath was hot and damp on the skin of Brea's inner thigh. Her breath caught as he flicked his tongue lightly over the sensitive skin there. His fingers slid easily between her lips and she moaned in want and need as he pumped it slowly in and out That's of her. David. He lowered his mouth to her clitoris and went to work, alternately sucking and lapping it with his tongue, <laughs> sending terrible. shocks of pleasure through her, through her. Her fingers found the top of his smooth blue head and she pressed it down thrusting her hips up to meet his touch. He finally lifted his head, meeting his eye, her eyes with his own, full of mirrored, burning passion. In one motion, he moved up her body, positioning himself between her legs. He braced his right arm beside her head, his left hand steadying his engorged purple cock at the t entrance of her cunt. He slid his staff smoothly into her, and she wrapped her legs around his tight blue ass, <laughs> eagerly pulling him deeper. They moved together, rocking against each other fluidly. Her mind emptied of everything that wasn't him, his breath on her neck, his slow growling moans and his pistoning shaft. She commanded him to go faster, and though she cried out in elfish, he needed no translation. He quickened his thrusts, grinding his pelvis against her as they rode each other faster and faster towards climax. Uh, so that's it. Um, thoughts? Born in punches, everybody. Concerns? <laughs> well, I've never had an erection li live on a live stream before. Thank you. It's a new Why do you think I got me. the book uh, on top of my lap now? <laughs> That's fair. Kelly's just happy he has a desk there. <laughs> Why do you think I got the desk? <laughs> Were you expecting to be have an erection every show that we record? or? Well, I mean, I'm three for three so far, so... <laughs> That's fair. That's a pretty good chance, then. So just a reminder, that was uh, Kelly's idea. Um, he signed off on that. He actually read the piece beforehand and he thought it was great. And he specifically picked these three paragraphs to be read. So yeah, I ghost wrote it anyway. So, <laughs> so is, that actually, is, that actually a, uh, is that actually something that you're writing? Do you write fantasy erotica or is that was that a, like that that it is your sort of endeavors as a novelist uh was that a joke or do you actually write fantasy erotica uh as, as at the risk of ruining the bit that was that was a bit oh, mm -hmm. well, i appreciate really that you asked though i was like i can tell like, you're like holding in your reaction or a computer <laughs> yeah it's definitely just a bit that i've written an entire novelette of Okay, well, I'm like, should I should I be like really genuinely supportive because it was pretty good, I guess, you know, or should I be teasing? Because if you're if you're serious, I don't really want to tease you. I mean, it's, it's a vulnerable thing to share, you know. But if it's a that's, joke, then that's fair. Yeah. Well, thanks. I uh, I did anticipate that. I mean, I feel like these two guys know me well enough to know that I was doing a bit, but I appreciate your sincerity. All I can say is no notes. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that David came out to listen to that, by the way. Where do we go from there? Um, yeah. I mean, we could, you know, ask interview questions to our guest, I guess. Is that how these things are done? I guess you're you're a podcaster, James. You Maybe you can give us a little guidance here. Well, I'm kind of a little bit more curious about this throbbing purple cock. Uh, Good question. Yeah, I thought a lot about Kelly, that. If, if Kelly could describe what he had in his mind in more detail, I think, uh, I think that that should be the interview. Uh, what I had in more detail about what? Purple cocks. The, the throbbing oh, wait, purple cock. It, oh, sorry, the know? engorged purple cock, I think it was. Oh, it was engorged, yes. yes. yes pardon me. Oh, are you referring to the fact that I ghost wrote it? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure. Sometimes I don't get listened to um, by basically everyone in this room. So just, you know, I, I like to clearly communicate with everyone. Um, what did I mean? Well, all right. So... You know, like, you know, Waluigi, right? Of course. Yeah. So, you know, kind of the way his hat sits on his head just so. So, like, 
imagine that hat like like imagine if you stuffed waluigi into a morph suit that was purple but like it had no arms or legs it was just a tube with that like jaunty hat shape at the end now like take that shape in your mind and that that is the purple cock you know it's kind of gangly it goes wah um but that's, <laughs> that's sort of what i was driving at and like yeah like um you know like some some cocks have like hair like you know a decent ways up the base so like Waluigi's has like a little pointy mustache amount, like just under the head of it. Mm-hmm. 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 Or sorry, no, this cock I'm talking about, which is like it evokes Waluigi, but it is not Waluigi. I want to be clear. There's That's no exactly what I was there. picturing. You did a good job of describing that. Well, you did a good job of reading it, Nicole. I'm so glad we're friends and teammates. Thank you. Yeah, I think we work really well together. <laughs> Great, my second on-air erection. This is fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. I'm breaking so many boundaries. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. Now, do, now, are we going to ask the real questions, or are we going to are we gonna ask the bit questions first? Um, I don't have time for bits anymore. To be honest, it might have to actually be a little sincere for a second. Oh my god! All right, we got okay. We got we got 15 minutes until we start our game. So, let's go with five minutes of dumb questions. Five minutes of the semi-dumb question and five minutes of serious questions. Can we power through this? Sure. You want to start also, us up with we, a... We, we could be a bit relaxed, too. I can I can add an extra 10, 15 on, on the end for me here, too. So uh, let's we'll just see figure it out as we go. You know what? Let's just dive right in. No rudder, no captain, no steering wheel. We are just going to dive in. So, James, I recently listened to your episode of the effects of psilocybin on creativity. Mm-hmm. So I loved it. I want to know more about, like, have you looked into the effects of alcohol and creativity? Because the uh, relevance to us here is that that, of, that is Nicole's, like, kind of plan A here in terms of executing this show. So, like, yeah, is there a lot of research on that? Is there some peer-reviewed stuff? I have no idea how sincere that question was. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't. Although I anticipate that the reduced, um, what's the word of the, the reduced inhibitions of what's coming up in your mind and what comes out of your mouth will likely create an increased capacity for some sort of, uh, you know, creative expression in some way or another. But there's got to be diminishing returns at some point. Um, so my right. answer you is about an hour yes, no, I don't time. know. Fantastic. I mean, I hopefully oh, because I was told I, I needed to have some sort of uh, funniness. I'm usually kind of a serious guy, at least publicly. So I've been I've been drinking in the effort to be a little <laughs> bit more relaxed. So I don't know if that's going to translate as more creative or uh, or what, but we'll see. So I anecdotally, it's not so much... you feel like it's working? <laughs> I feel better about myself. So that's the only thing that really matters, isn't it? I found that it's not so much like it doesn't so much spur creativity for me is um, makes me more willing to read ogre erotica on a live stream. (laughs) Uh, It's also being recorded. Um, I have no intentions to ever run for office in case anyone is like waiting to publish this at the opportune time. It's also what I'm curious about is on a DVD to your parents next week. Oh, that's well, I was fine. actually just going to say my 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 dad often uh, often ends up watching whatever it is that I that I do uh, on YouTube and all the rest. So I'm very curious to see what he has to say when he finds this one on his feed, and he's like, "Well, that was an interesting conversation you had there." So. <laughs> uh, I should, I'll just send this directly to my parents and get ahead of it. Actually, my mom right, lives in well, the same house. I'll just hand her my notebook. You well, should that's, just that's send how the story. You, uh, that's how you get ahead of the thing. That's getting ahead of the story. You know, classic classic political movements right there. Mm-hmm. Just don't so give I, any don't context. Even... Just send it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the only way I ever send any of my erotica to people. So I don't know if you've looked into this one, um, but I'm currently working with studying the effects of sleep depth on creativity. Um, that's kind of my, like, counterbalance to Nicole's alcohol um Nicole's alcohol pursuit and Josh I believe you're doing the effects of hentai and creativity right well and you had a little bit of alcohol and uh sleep deprivation on top of that I try to like round out all my bases here I figure if one of the thing affects creativity very well if I just keep stacking them it's like stacking buffs in a RPG or something like that you just 
you keep getting better and not completely destroying your life and going off the rails. Yeah. If we're talking experimentally, though, you should really only be changing one, um, like, factor in each experiment. But Well, now they know. tell me. <laughs> okay, Nicole. Uh, you want to... Uh, so wait, was that, you was actually, that a question about sleep? Was that a question like, about sleep deprivation? <laughs> I truly don't know anymore. That like, if you if you think your confund we're doing a bit, like you should live in our heads. It is a nightmare land. Uh, I I wrote a whole bunch of questions on here, and I don't remember which ones uh, were sincere. But I, I I'm gonna credit that one to the sleep depth. So um, if it feels creative, then there you go. I think uh, I heard Matthew Walker on an interview say one point that sleep deprivation at first gives somebody the perception that they're doing better, but the reality is that they're performing worse in all possible uh, areas of measure. So that's something to hang on as your, your creativity gets better over time with your sleep depth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds great. Like, as long as I have the perception I'm doing better, like, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm the only one that really exists, right? So everything else is just like fucking gravy, right? Exactly. Right, right, right. right. Solopsism. Get in it. Get with it. Ooh, solopsism. Can you give us a definition for that? For I mean, obviously, I know what it means, but for our viewers at home. Uh, shit, I hope I know what it means. I'm going to come off like a bit of an idiot. <laughs> uh, uh, for using the word without knowing what it means. It's like um, perceiving all of reality and all of life as being a creation of not just like, oh, I am that I am kind of thing, but as in everything is me, all of this is me and all of reality is me mm. and it comes from me. All I right. hope that's not wrong. I really hope that's not wrong. Um, our, David's usually our fact checker here, but. It, uh, it checks out. That? It checks yeah. out. It does. Yeah. Pretty so much exactly what it is. Hell yeah. All right. Point yeah. one for James. I'm writing this down. James. I'm already getting points. Are we in the game? This is so yeah. existential. Oh man, are you excited to win this game? <laughs> okay, I have, I have. Uh, Nicole and I, I think, are kind of share this sentiment. This is a, this is a line of questioning that I think perfectly splits the middle between sincerity and doing a bit. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, I, I'm gonna compliment your show here. It's very smart, and. Like I was listening to it today and like I, I've listened, been listening to it all week trying to catch up a bit and be like trying to prep for this because I am, you know, a professional. And, you know, with each successive episode, I listened to a whole bunch of different ones. I was really struck by this feeling. I was like, wow, I am so fucking dumb. I don't understand any of this. Like this dude knows what polyvagal means. This dude knows what receptor site is which this like, might explain my I, low I barely YouTube know count. which end to put it in like <laughs> <laughs> so what what we were kind of hoping was um because like I'll, I'll be honest i think one of the things that's challenging to me about your podcast even sharing it with people is that like you you're so knowledgeable that sometimes that in itself is inaccessible because it's some of the episodes when you walk into them and you're like, I don't understand what brainwave harmonics are, let alone how LSD would affect them. So it's like, all right, this is this this is for the smart kids. I'm gonna go over here and watch, you know, like Come Town or something. So, uh, yeah. So what we thought we would do is kind of go through a selection of your episodes, like just based on titles. And can you tell us in like simple English, like? language a three-year-old would understand what they're about yeah yeah okay all right Nicole, do you want to go first yeah i got me. i got some here um uh got psilocybin and the cultivation of compassion can you give us a little a little bit about what that's about so that was a recording of a lecture that i gave that described how utilizing psilocybin can have us be more connected with our feelings, in particular difficult feelings, so that we can feel difficult feelings as they're awakened in us in response to the challenges of others without pulling away from it. And so in doing so, we can stay with a person while they're in their difficult feelings while being in our own. 
And there's another layer there, which would make it compassion, which is being able to not lose ourselves in their feelings or dissociate from our own, but stay connected with love and care for that other person's well-being. And that psilocybin can take us through experiences that can uh, increase our capacity to do that by, by sort of altering the manner in which we feel our own challenging feelings. Okay. Was that okay? Was that like... Was that three year old? So like, what did that you was, say? That was, that was a 12 year old and I appreciate it. Um, I did have like a three year old suggestion. Um, sure. Is just how mushrooms help you care about shit. Yeah. How mushrooms. Can you okay, say how shit about to a three year old, Nicole? <laughs> <laughs> you think how I mushrooms yeah, can help learn you sometime. care about other people better. Yes. That's perfect. I'm going to scratch out shit and say that. <laughs> I don't hang out with children, so. No, I mean, at seven, you could probably say shit around them. Seven. Yeah. Okay, I got one. I got one loaded up here. Neurofeedback therapy and psychedelics. Okay, I'm I'm gonna try to get into the sentiment of this. Okay, yeah. um, strapping wires to your brain and then playing video games and having your brain give you signals that makes it happier and healthier. Hell yeah! So, like, I look at game, game shoots duck hunt zapper gun at me changes brain i feel good yeah so um strap wires to your head those wires run into a video game the game is altered by how your brain is working and alters how your brain is working and where psychedelics come into that is having them in your system while you're doing it or doing it to make your brain more like your own psychedelics. Hmm. I think that genuinely... I think that's 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 up to like that's up to the 12 year 12 year old level again. Um but yeah I think 12 year old is genuinely where I'm at. So like outside of any insincerity I think that helped me understand that a little better. Mm-hmm. Yeah absolutely that's really cool actually uh, if you uh, I got another one here actually I was gonna say people who are interested in neurofeedback that episode is with Heather Hargraves and she's from London Ontario and she is another very smart person but I think that she might be better at the 12 year old explanations than I am <laughs> but but she's also very brilliant as you would see from listening to the episode if you if anyone checks it out okay. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and for I guess uh, for the record, that uh, podcast or that channel on YouTube is Adventures, Adventures through the mind. Adventures through the mind. Correct. Okay. Yep. I guess yeah, we can do plugs at the end, but just in case anyone stops watching here because the like, show gets shitty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I won't take it personal. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it won't be because of you. I promise. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, I had another one here. The a somatic relational approach to the psychedelic, to psychedelic therapy. What, 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 would, what was that about? Uh, oh, you're so okay. lost during that one. Go on. Okay. okay. Um, three-year-old-ish. Um, somatic means how your body feels. Relational means your connections with others. Um, psychedelics means you've taken psychedelics. Therapy means you're fixing something that isn't working well. And so it's focusing on how it feels to be in connection with another person as a part of therapy that includes psychedelics. Okay. Being that other person being like another person that's also, you know, experiencing therapy with you or that, that person being like your therapist. Your therapist. Oh, okay. Interesting. Something like that. I feel so self-conscious right now. This is very difficult for me to explain it this way. I don't produce content. I produce content explicitly for um, generally for a, a, te a technical audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, although I know I, I have a lot of general audience listeners as well. So I'm like, it's it's really waking up some kind of like uh, maybe some some sort of like uh inadequacy stuff that i was like i'm like oh my god i can't explain it except really complicated einstein was right i, I don't understand it well enough <laughs> no it's that's please don't be self-conscious you're nailing it you're doing a fantastic job i Thank again 
Uh, Kelly and I are very dumb, animals. and I understood that, so. I, yeah. I pretend I'm an intellectual, but I just write ogre porn, so. <laughs> So if I if I understand like that one correctly, it's almost like that therapy is the opposite on like every possible level as like taking a giant pile of mushrooms and locking yourself in a float tank. Uh, because like you're you're now I, with I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say on on every possible level because there's still there's still psychedelics on board oh, so there's something something going on there. Um, but yes, it it has a number of other elements. For example, uh, structured facilitation, um, unless you count how psilocybin guides you, how psilocybin expresses its intelligence through the experience it guides you on as being some type of structured facilitation, um, then that is missing in the float tank for sure. Light and sound that's not coming from inside your brain exclusively, uh, that's also missing in the float tank from a relational somatic therapy session. Mm -hmm. and so did you talk to was that um like a therapist that you talked to that like a therapist that uses those tools the relational somatic psychedelic therapy one i was talking with two people and uh one of which uh was one of which focused on the relational somatic sort of understanding of things from an academic perspective and the other was a practicing therapist mm-hmm Okay, that's a, that's really cool. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And both of which were anonymous, although the therapist decided to reveal her, excuse me, reveal her uh, identity shortly after that. Oh, okay. She's an underground provider. Oh, okay, right. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. that that's, I, I've seen, I guess, articles about that um, those sorts of things are opening up, like those sorts of treatments, but I don't know how far that goes and how regulated it is and anything like that, but. Uh, uh, presently in Canada, uh, there is a very small selection of people who are legally able to receive psilocybin-assisted therapies, and there's even a smaller selection of people who are able to give it, which is Theracil, an organization, I think, based out of um, BC, and then I think it's called Syntac or Syntax. That's actually based out of Calgary. Um and they are both they've both been granted uh s granted the ability to provide therapy to certain patients under the um section 56 emergency access program through health canada um in particular for palliative patients which is patients who are dying and their medical treatment now is how do we make your dying easier and i do believe that they also got um, approval for not very many people, a very small amount of people, and they're still trying to get more approvals, but also for one person who was suffering from debilitating trauma, who wasn't palliative. And I believe they also got access for their therapists to receive therapy themselves, because in what mind state <laughs> is it a good idea to have people be therapists providing psychedelics who have never officially received psychedelic therapy or had psychedelic experiences which is an issue presently facing the psychedelic medicalization um uh, psychedelic medicalization i don't know what you call it uh, path pathway movement that's the word i'm looking for right yeah. that's something that definitely comes up for me a lot like in all earnestness when i particularly listen to episodes about like new innovative therapies like i was thinking about this a lot during that um uh the heather hargrave one um what's that uh, neurofeedback therapy yeah and because i was listening to it and i was thinking just man i i want to try this this sounds amazing and yeah i think what comes up through a lot of those therapy episodes is especially when you're talking to people that aren't from Ontario, they're in, you know, they're in Australia or in the US or they're wherever. And I feel like it's not addressed, like, but how accessible is this? And like, if it's legal where you are, does it cost a bunch of money? Cause it's not really covered. Are there, are there a lot of barriers where the, where the treatments are legal and they are permitted? Like, I know that's broad, but even for any specific yeah, one. So so I would I would say right off the bat, um, good therapy. 
Uh, good therapy is extremely difficult to access for anyone who is not in a high economic situation. If you're not making quite a bit of money, the chances that you're going to be able to afford therapy is very low. Um, psychological help is available in Canada that's paid for, but that help isn't necessarily good quality therapy. And you likely have to go through a lot of bureaucratic hoopla to get it. For example, I'm waiting to see a dermatologist because I have a scalp thing. And I was informed a couple of days ago after waiting three months that my appointment will be sometime at the end of 2022. So I assume, you know, I love free healthcare. No, or well, you know, social healthcare. But so access. Uh, <laughs> that's a look on your face. Access is in, 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 is incredibly incredibly prohibitive for good therapy in general. Then when you look at something like neurofeedback, it's highly specialized in its training. It also has extremely expensive technology involved that is so specific that all of that technology generally is very expensive for even the therapist to get access to. So then you're looking at a lot of expensive stuff. It's also not entirely niche. Neurofeedback has a great history of being very effective for um, mental health issues, um, including things as intense as dissociative identity disorder, previously known as uh, multiple, multiple personalities, um, and extreme trauma. But uh, because of that, the specialists that exist aren't exactly as easy as finding, say, a basic counselor, right? And then you mix that in with somebody like Heather, who is like on the cutting edge of an entirely new frame of understanding how to work with neurofeedback based in research with psychedelics, which is brain research with psychedelics, which is, you know, since 2012, this has sort of started the renaissance or whatever. It's highly specific. It's expensive. It's hard to access and psychedelics and psychedelic therapy is still illegal, like basically everywhere. So, uh, yes, unfortunately much of that, uh, interview is for people who can afford and access Heather, um, or are people who are interested in the ideas and can find neurofeedback. Neurofeedback's not hard to find, but it is expensive. Um, it's not easy to find, but it's not as difficult as say trying to find a good quality underground psychedelic therapist, which is obviously much more difficult because of the legalities involved in the provider and the risks that they're taking. Yeah. Yeah. So are those barriers to access like pretty common across a lot of these innovative therapies or like really case by case? Uh, I think that it would be, I think it's, it's fair to say that the barriers are pretty widespread. Um, and that, for example, it's probably a lot easier to find a cutting edge neurofeedback therapist or like psychedelic therapist or something in like Los Angeles or New York or Toronto or Van or Vancouver, especially, you know, and even in Calgary, which has quite a scene, um, which I don't get any credit for, but I think I played a very valuable role in creating back when I was living there. Um, yeah, me too, me too. But, uh, you know, compared to somewhere like Ajax in Ontario, which you may only know because I think that's where Avril Lavigne came from, who you may know. Mm -hmm. I think that you're of the age to know who Avril Lavigne was, you know? So, um, so yeah, it, it really has a lot to do with geography as well. And neurofeedback, I think Heather was mentioning, and I am excited to try it out, that there are headsets now that are reasonably affordable, like around the $200 range, which is not that expensive, that can be, you can do remote neurofeedback sessions with a therapist who can control that headset from their place where they are. Um, and then you'll eventually get AI and automated programs and stuff like that, but obviously a a trained technician, trained, skilled, experienced technician will always be something special. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I definitely like w would like to be optimistic that some of those things will become more accessible. But as you said, like even kind of basic therapy is often like pretty inaccessible to most people here, right? Like, well, access, um, access is a huge issue in the sort of larger social discourse around the medicalization of psychedelics because chances are when access rolls out it's going to be extremely expensive you have companies organizations that are 
literally fun funneling millions of dollars they're going to be fill, building these like places like field trip in toronto which i'm not endorsing but they exist it's like super expensive very swanky looking stuff then you've got the cost of training these therapists you've got the cost of insurance of doing what is still considered a highly risky therapy you know and then you've got um the cost of the actual substances which is very expensive to get legal access to these stuff. yeah sure five dollars for a gram of mushrooms but i think it was something like thousands of dollars for one dose through the through the research or something like that so you're looking at an unbelievable cost for people to get quality psychedelic therapy with therapists or you're going to have corners cut you're not you're almost definitely not going to have insurance companies paying for it because your gp said you should probably have some psilocybin not for a long time um and i mean looking at what we get from uh like what is available with the way our um oh i just stubbed my toe really bad sorry um <laughs> with what we're currently is available to us from a healthcare perspective in socialized medicine, which I'm very grateful for. Um, we're not ex likely going to be getting high quality psychedelic therapy on reasonable and, you know, reason reasonable access to people who are in lower economic status um, anytime soon, if ever. So those barriers will exist, you know, so with all this work, it's, you know, it's going to be the, the upper class the highest <laughs> highest class that are going to be getting access to these therapies through the official channels probably for quite some time yeah yeah so for now the heroic dose in the float tank or i i guess you know a, a reasonable dose in like a stand of trees is our best bet sometimes i mean that's therapy i mean that's i mean that's not therapy <laughs> quote you know tm but uh i i mean that's a big thing too which is like medicalization is one way and it's a valuable way but if medicalization doesn't include decriminalization and the right for a person to take their mushrooms out in the woods you know then it's not exactly serving i think sir i don't i don't I, personally i don't think excuse me it's the right direction to be going it's just like prohibition 2.0 it's like prohibition unless you're rich kind of thing which prohibition already is it's prohibition unless you're rich so yeah i i have actually so many more genuine questions that i wanted to get to but i think we're kind of getting to a time crunch with wanting to play a game right you're probably chomping at the bit over there on the couch i i've actually been really enjoying this conversation because i'm not too much into the psychedelic scene i'm more of a drinker myself uh you know the traditionalist basically <laughs> so a lot of this has actually been very interesting to me so um as much as I'd like to get the game going, I'm glad that we took the time to sort of go through this in more of an in-depth way. So thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, well, why don't you guys, if, if it's okay, why don't you ask another question uh, if you're enjoying it? And then if it feels right, we can get in the game after that. Well, these ones are the ones, because unfortunately it seems like every time this happens, I'm not given any... Uh, any real homework to do ahead of time. The last show I didn't get told what was going on, and unfortunately I wasn't told about you either. So uh, I'll leave the question to these two right here. They seem to have some good ones up, but please do tell one more and then maybe we'll get into the game. Now well, Josh, here's here's an, here's something though. Josh, if you if 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 you don't know much about psychedelics, for example, you know, possibly a lot of other people don't. Why don't you ask the question that feels like the genuine question you're holding? All right, so um, I actually, I've only done mushrooms a couple times, done acid once in college, all that fun stuff. So my, my very limited casual experience here, not so much on the, the spiritual sides of things. And I had a friend of mine actually recently who went out to his cabin after a bad breakup for this sort of thing, this sort of, I'll call it self-therapy for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. where he, you know, microdosed on mushrooms and just enjoyed the woods for a little while. And he said he was exper uh, experiencing sort of like, a more spiritual experience i'm kind of being redundant but anyways uh so i'm just be as someone who's not very spiritual to begin with and one who doesn't do a whole lot of psychedelics um how would you describe the benefits of a sort of spiritual experience in the woods on any kind of psychedelic but I'm, i keep using mushrooms as an example because that's my most frequent uh used one mm -hmm. um well, uh, of course, the word spiritual and the concept of spirituality can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. 
right? Yeah, it's um, a pretty broad experience. I guess I should narrow it down just a little well, bit by well, saying. Well, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. like uh, an individualistic sort of. I guess awakening would be a good way of saying it. Like just an, a new openness as a result of the psychedelics in a calming environment, like the woods or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, well, yeah, there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot that could be, could be said about it. Um, but one thing to, one thing could be something like, um, there is something profoundly refreshing healing and positive about having the experience of being connected with something larger than yourself and that connection being a positive one a, uh, like one that feels meaningful so for example if your friend's going through a breakup if you think about, and I'm, I'm just kind of going off the fly, so I don't know what your friend's experience was. But if you think about going through a breakup, my assumption is there's grief. And in that grief, there's sorrow. Um, there's likely probably a sense of being alone. There's a, probably a lot of stories there. You know, maybe there's feelings of abandonment. There's maybe concerns about hopelessness or issues of inadequacy or worthlessness. There could be feelings of... Uh, yeah, there just could be there could be guilt, shame, you know, there could be a lot of things going on. And taking something like psilocybin and sort of opening oneself up to feel those things while also opening up to a sense of being connected with the forest that's holding you in those things can kind of create a new way or a different way to move through those feelings and get perspective on those feelings in a way that doesn't make the feelings go away but contextualizes them in a way that makes them more manageable or maybe makes them a part of a larger process that enables you to move through them and on to the next stage of your life more coherently, effectively, or positively. Um, yeah, something like that, maybe. Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm just more curious about it anything else because uh, I've, in addition, I've just had other people talk about it. So I was always just sort of like morbidly curious more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's i mean i made a lot of assumptions there i made the assumption that you know uh, that the dose was big enough that they felt connected to the forest that they saw the forest as something that could hold them that the forest is something that can hold you i mean that's an i believe so but that it might not be a thing um but a lot of it i think comes down to being able to feel the feelings that are there in a way that though that feeling process is held in a different context than it would be otherwise and by that i mean psychological context as in like you're maybe experiencing them less from this like oh i just wish it wasn't hurting so much and i don't want to be here to oh this is just what's happening and it's moving through me for example is something that tends to come up with psilocybin or pushes those emotions through you whether you want to feel them or not and then also being in a situation where you're, because you're on mushrooms, you're looking around and you feel the life of the trees. You feel the forest around you. You feel it living and breathing. You maybe hear it communicating to you. You maybe like have the sense that it cares for you or that life cares for you or that, that, that there is a care and a love that sort of uh under underwrites all experiences even the experience of the pain the grief the sorrow the sadness the worthlessness the guilt all of that could be underwritten by something greater than how we're reacting to it in the moment which psilocybin in a forest can really wake up and then those those feelings and the stories we have about them can shift as a consequence of of experiences like that I don't know if that you don't made give sense. Yourself enough, uh, enough credit. You said you very usually speak to a technical audience, but that was very well, well eloquated towards uh, more of a layman's thing, speaking as a layman and these sorts of things. So, uh, thank you, thank you for that very good answer, for lack of you know anything profound to say myself. So, well, thank you, and thank you for your compliment and for your question. I think questions are, I mean, questions are a beautiful thing. I think a sacred thing to ask a question. Um, and so it felt like you brought an honest question and I appreciate that you did so. And so I got a bit distracted by tech stuff, but your question, was it basically like how, like, 
how would you explain to like a you as a layman how how um like mushrooms in a forest can be therapeutic well yeah sort of the the, the experience itself and then sort of like um what can be beneficial about that because like right. i said I, I don't do a lot of um that sort of thing at the best of times so I was just, it's more of curiosity because i know friends of mine have done it so yeah i think that it was very well explained there and, you know another another thing too and this is going to seem maybe counterintuitive is that as we're suffering through those things for example like all the feelings that i mentioned there's no guarantee that in the midst of all of that we're actually just feeling super fucking sad and just being like, I am so sad and just crying because I'm so sad. And one of the things that mushrooms do is that they help us feel when we're sad, acknowledge that we're sad and just cry and just feel those things. A lot of the times we end up stuck in places because we're not actually feeling our way through them. And mushrooms can help in that. And then mushrooms in the context of the forest, like I was just describing more so, you know, it adds a flavor to the meaning of that experience with that, which then can sort of feed into the, you know, the, I don't know the right word, the rehabilitating after, after a breakup process, um, in a way that could be very helpful. Right. Perfect. I think you've explained it very well. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn to the other two hosts here because I feel like I've been kind of stealing the show for a little while here. So no, man, it's everyone's show. If you added to it. Um, like if I can add to that, like my experience as like a lay person is that kind of to, to add to what you said, James, about um, like just feeling sad or something like that. I had a pretty like one particular experience I had, which was a whole plant medicine retreat. Um, not just, you know, the substance I was engaging with, but also the, like the people around me and the kind of like intentions we put into it and the kind of container they were creating and the way that they were like there to support you and really what they were encouraging, um, taught me a lot about that, which was that a lot of what I was doing in my life was like, when you have the negative emotion, you suppress it. Like that's how you improve your mood. And that, it was like a skill I had to learn and I've been trying to learn ever since. And I think getting better at it is being able to like stop when you feel that tinge of whatever is frazzling you. Like today for me, it's being stressed because I've, I have to run from one thing to the other and we're setting up all these things for this and being able to, instead of just being, I'm mad at this thing because it's happening, looking at what's internal and going, oh, okay, I'm feeling anxiety right now. Why am I feeling anxiety? And kind of, yeah, just being better identifying what you're feeling and why you're feeling it and allowing yourself to feel it and think like, okay, it's okay to feel anxious right now. You have some reasons to. Or with mm -hmm. the example of the breakup, like it's okay to feel sad. It's healthy to feel sad. So instead of going, well, I have to push that behind me, like taking a minute to drop everything, both physically and emotionally and going, okay, I'm going to lay on the couch and just let this emotion wash through me. And often what I found is you actually start to feel better faster because you took your 10 minutes to cry about it instead of spending six months just or, or just indefinitely, like just forever not dealing with that emotion. I don't know if I added to that in like a clear way, but. No, no, that's uh, it's a good little addition in my opinion. I mean. It all sounds like heap of shit to me, but no, um, uh, it's actually very, very uh, educational, I guess, in these sorts of things. So it's exciting to see these other perspectives on not only psychedelics just as a, a concept, but what it can do to benefit people. Because, you know, like I said, I've only experienced it as a recreational substance. So it's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I think. Oh, sorry, James, if you don't mind. I was just going to add, I think there's a lot of crossover. Um, and I, I, I imagine this is like pretty common, but uh, there's a lot of crossover, I think, between things like, like psychedelics, specifically mushrooms and things like mindfulness in that same way where it's, you know, it's allowing yourself to feel something, acknowledging that you feel that thing, and then 
going back to like some sort of, you know, um, like anchor, um, like a lot of meditation uses your breath, obviously, but it's, yeah, I think there's, it's, it's, it's interesting that there's a lot of crossover between, it's interesting to me, there's a big a lot of crossover between psychedelics and mindfulness. And I think um, psychedelics are, I think a good gateway into that sort of mindfulness practice, because it gives you a glimpse. I, I think it's like a kind of a, like a highway to that sort of thing where it's like, okay, I'm on this train now and this is happening to me. Whereas I, I, I feel with meditation, I, you know, you get like little glimpses of that, um, but it takes a lot of time and effort and work. Um, so it's, it's, I, I, I've talked to a few people and that that's been their gateway into, you know, a more mindful practice, more meditation, that sort of thing is they've done sort of some sort of psychedelic, they've experienced this feeling um and then they've somehow come across meditation and been like oh this makes me feel the same way and this is something that i can do in the morning before work um yeah i uh, it's an interesting connection sorry james you were saying something uh yeah no apologies needed i'll actually what i was gonna say no, compliments. Is back. Yeah. Sorry. uh so so what i was gonna say is um that the feeling of sadness right okay sadness but even if conceptually, like in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to let myself feel sad. I don't know if any of you have experienced this where you're like, yeah, I'm going to let myself feel sad. And as soon as you do that, it's like the sadness is gone. I don't know if you've had an experience where you felt tears coming up and you're like, yeah, this is good. I'm going to let myself cry. But you don't, you can't, it, your body just shuts it down. Your, so your nervous system just shuts it down. Like, mm -hmm. whoop, you're like, oh, I want to be able to, but I just, I'm stuck here. That the thing with psilocybin is that that part of you that is clamping down that sort of automatic defensiveness the automatic self-protection from feelings that are not okay that you don't like that we've been taught are bad and wrong which is anything that you know increasingly less but you know sad you want to get away from sadness as quickly as possible you want to get through you want to you want sadness to go away that's what sadness is for sadness is to make it go away kind of thing it's hard to get out of that and psilocybin can break those walls down so it just comes out of you you don't have to try it's just there you just either let it happen or you don't and if you don't it feels horrible way worse <laughs> it's anxiety and it's stress and it's bad trip eventually you know if it's too much but it can just come out of you and then there's the context of feeling also connected with things beyond yourself and that your sadness it coming through you is also connected and this is something that's important to speak to because when you say meditation I love the metaphor, something like, you know, meditation is like getting your uh, pilot's license and psychedelics are like flying a plane. You certainly don't need your license to try to fly the plane, but it does help. <laughs> um, and and it's, it's entirely possible. We've been talking positively about psychedel psychedelics. It's entirely possible to hurt yourself. It's entirely possible to take too much, to take it in the wrong context with the wrong people or the wrong lack of people and end up having an experience that is just too much, too soon, too fast. Because we're talking about sadness and connecting with the force and all the rest, but there's also the possibility of just feeling like trapped in an infinite loop of lost and alone and hell with no escape. And there are demons coming at you and aliens trying to fuck your brain and stuff. And you're just full of anxiety. You know, you can go into that place too, right? And so, in the conversations we're having about the positive effects of psychedelics, it's also incredibly important still to keep in mind that, you know, they are, uh, they're extremely powerful, you know, and they can be in the right doses used as playthings and they can be fantastic as playthings, as I can attest to and Josh, you could probably also attest to. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, you know, they can also cause quite a, quite a hard time. And especially when A, you're using them without the recognition that they can be difficult, that can set up for a hard time. Because then when it starts getting a hard time, you're like, oh shit, this isn't supposed to happen. This is supposed to be fun. And there's the anxiety. Or you're like, yeah, mushrooms are good for me. I'm going to use them to heal my depression. I'm just going to go out into the woods and I'm just going to eat like five grams, just like Terrence McKenna said. And that's just going to heal my depression because that's what the science says, right? But then you end up freaking out and you know it doesn't end up being positive. So um it's not all good here but there's a lot of good that can come from it so i wanted to add that little caveat in too I, th I think that's important to sort of add there i mean that's like a lot of medications that have to do with um 
mind altering for again lack of a better term coming to my head at the moment i think it's important to acknowledge that these things are altering states and so yeah basically buyer beware and be aware of what can happen but yeah like you said i think there's lots of good that can come from it even just looking at it as an outside observer basically mm -hmm. yeah and they're not and and a lot of the conversations we're talking about is the mostly man well-managed experience but the reality is psychedelics are so much more than what we're talking about and they will take you to places you cannot even believe or anticipate in advance like it is a strange world it's what eric davis says high weirdness there is some unbelievably fucking strange stuff going on and you take a little bit too much in the wrong context and that's the only thing you're going to know and that's cool and interesting and exciting but it's also can be terrifying and something to be kept in mind and a lot of the language around psychedelics right now is to try to compartmentalize them into this like tool for wellness and healing and like spiritual practice but they don't recognize the sort of like being cracked open to you know inconceivable realities that actually just leave you feeling alienated and alone and you don't understand how to make sense of this having too much god or whatever it is you know so um yeah psychedelics are of the wild <laughs> they're of the wild yeah i yeah. mean like i i would say simultaneously that um like certain psychedelic experiences have been so transformative for me in a positive way and like in some cases arguably like just are like completely changed my mental state for the better and like if i was gonna be really dramatic maybe i would say save my life but i would also say that like i've had a few experiences on them that were um at least one that was based on my first experience that i would say was traumatic and gave me something akin to like a mental break and so like you know both and both those things can happen for the same person i think so like i think it's important to understand that that whole spectrum exists mm -hmm. and sometimes that mental break is actually part of the process you need to get to healing not to try to like put it on a pedestal or sort of like uh, uh cut the edges off the thing or anything but you know sometimes that's a part of it too and if you don't have the right support around you or you have people that are you know they don't understand it can it can make it worse i did a whole podcast with a set of specialists talking about spiritual crisis and what it is and how to pass through it and i, I feel like that's one of my more valuable podcasts um, because it speaks to the you know the unintended the unintended seemingly negative consequences of psychedelic experiences or spiritual experiences that end up dismantling your life in a way that you didn't intend didn't prepare for and don't desire at least not acutely so yeah yeah uh, yeah sorry i would love to second that that is a really good episode um and i even as a dumb person i totally got a lot out of it um i feel like we could talk about these conversation threads for like hours and hours but um let's get into get some to, gaming yeah I'll, I'll just wrap it up with one an another episode recommendation because um this came up a bit when Nicole, you were talking about mindfulness and like there's certain, um, like I think Nicole, when I brought up James as a guest to you, you were like, oh, he's a shrooms guy, right? And like, I think there, it's easy to kind of label your show as like, it's all about mushrooms, it's all about psychedelics. But one of the episodes that stuck with me the most, and this is like several years ago now, this is like 2018 maybe, was uh, an episode that was about mindfulness. You had a guest, I can't remember what his name was, but he was, I think he just talked about mindfulness and he, he had this line that really stuck with me that was um, one of the benefits of mindfulness for him was that it helped him stop taking the world so personally. And I still think about that regularly in terms of like just feeling better, feeling more okay with whatever's happening, not getting like so angry with the world and holding grudges with people is yeah it comes down to that and i don't know if you remember who that guest was but it was just a stellar episode and i would recommend it to anyone i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember yeah i'm coming up on 150 now um so there's a lot all right well all if i find it i'll put it in uh in like the youtube description and stuff later but yeah josh do you want to kind of kick us off here and absolutely i can get us started with this so for a quick recap for those who weren't here last week um we have a world in which 
people go into dungeons like they normally do for adventuring, supplies, killing monsters, blah, blah, blah. And when they're in there for extended amounts of time, do you get kind of used to that gross dungeon food, the sort of like MREs of the dungeon or just living off the land, so to speak. So when they get out of the dungeon, they're very excited to just have a little piece of home. And that's what these merchants outside of the dungeon sell. So uh, last week we had a few different merchants looking for some missing stock. They came across some thugs working for a corporation run by a CEO who have been um, edited on the fly because I forgot to write down their name. So we are dealing with the Namazon Corporation run by Nef Kazos. And his job, his plan is to eventually buy up all these little caravans and sort of make a more corporate entity outside of there where you can buy lesser values pieces of home. Um, they came across these people who have stolen their resources, fought them off horrifically, might I add. Uh, it was a very violent affair that involved gouging out eyes with forks and freezing people's faces. Um, so, but they unfortunately did not find the supplies because they've been carried off by Goblin. So, with that in mind, that's where we're at right now. You guys are going to be engaging with this sort of convoy of Goblins that have stolen your supplies. So... On that note, though, we'll get uh, get you to introduce your character. I want to know their name. I want to know what their plans are and all that fun stuff. James, do you want to start? Yes, so, James first, and then we'll move on to the the repeat offenders. Okay, so I've never I've never done I've never done this before in my life. So hopefully my character isn't <laughs> super lame. Uh, so my character's name is Spry Psy Guy. Um, and uh, what I look like is basically how I do now, but with a staff and a gnome hat. Um, and my background is that I was lost by an infant raised by a tribe of gnomes that live inside mushrooms. And the tribe's economy is funded by selling our old homes uh, because they get humans high. And my, <laughs> uh, my special talents, do I tell them my special talents? or? Yeah, yeah, you can tell me your special ability. That'd be perfect. My special ability is that I can communicate with the forest, but with low accuracy. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Okay, and after that, we'll uh, we'll get our two repeat folks here. We'll start with you, Kelly. What was yours? Uh, I believe it was Angina. Yeah, my character's name is Angina Pectoris. Uh, and her description, she is packed and stacked, especially in the back. And uh, her background is that she spent years chaining uh, one scheme after another to cheat her lovers out of their disposable income. However, she caught a little too much heat on the last one and needs to lay low in the last place anyone would think to look for her uh, doing honest work. And uh, your special ability? Yeah, my, my special talent is that I have, uh, I'm a honeypot, so I have advantage on persuasion and deception toward anyone that is sexually oriented toward me. So when we ran into the polyamorous gay goblins last time, they were not charmed by me at all. And uh, I also have a ventriloquist dummy named Endo who has not entered the story yet, but... Yet being the key word. All right. And Nicole, Gone, if I've written this down correctly? Um, is that payback for me pronouncing your name incorrectly at the beginning of the show? I actually uh, just literally can't remember it because I have a goldfish brain. Oh, it's it's gone, Gondelf. Um, I'm an elf wizard who um, worked really hard to put myself through wizard school, but I, despite taking out a substantial wizard loan, I've been forced to work part time, uh, work a part time wizard job selling frozen goat's milk treats at my parents' ice cream business, the Fairy Queen. Um, I my special talents are oh, um, I did. For what I look like, I did uh, make a note here that I look like basically whatever your perception of what an elf looks like, that's what I look like. So my appearance is individual to each person that I meet. Um, and my special talent is a freezing powers, but I can only freeze something that like is like head sized essentially. Um, so they're very limited freezing powers. Um, they come in very handy at work, but not very much anywhere else unless you're freezing half of a dude's face. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, me. look back at the last episode to see that happen. 
Is it a spoiler alert if it already happened? I guess I yes. They haven't That's watched it yet. More than the episode, so. Fair. All right. All right. So we'll get started with this. Our intrepid op- Did you want to help him with his stats? I already gave his stats. Oh, wow. Oh, you're all over I'm stats. always on the ball. I'm a GM. I'm always Man. on the ball. Okay. I might like you more than Brady. you want to produce our show? What? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, David. We love you. <laughs> so. Our intrepid entrepreneurs committed hate crimes in the name of salvaging their goods by the Amazon Corporation run by Neff Kazos. He's a powerful CEO whose old name was changed for the purpose of a bit. <laughs> Our wonderful pierogi producers were unfortunately bought off by this dastardly and demonstrable devious dandy and have thus left our story. However, as our two remaining salesmen work their way towards a goblin encampment, they have since found themselves a new ally, a adventurer who had a penchant for a little bit of soft serve and is such looking to solve this supply issue. So our adventures, as we enter the story, are walking through the woods towards the location presented to them by the note given by the goblins last week. Wait, so those those other two were like corporate shields the whole time? They unfortunately were bought out in the interim that when you guys take a little night break to get ready to hunt these goblins, all of a sudden an agent of, I've already forgotten his name again, Nef Kazos came and uh, unfortunately it seems that they were bought off a little bit easier than the two of you. So their pierogi business is now underneath the umbrella branch of the Namazon Corporation. Well, that sucks. I knew, I knew I didn't like them. They had a terrible vibe. You think you know someone. Did you see they so, broke some dude's nose off? That was messed up. Kind of, yeah. As soon as you see like, someone gouge someone's eyes out with a fork, then you know they're bad news. So you I guess I have to ask that. You, as you make your way towards this small encampment that has about 20 little goblins, they're stout creatures with pot bellies, uh, what is, what is your, your first thoughts? Upon coming upon this camp. So wait, is, is Spry Sagai with us now, or we're about to meet him? Uh, he joined after leaving the cavern looking for soft serve, and unfortunately, Gon's stock was all gone. What? So, he has joined you in an attempt to sort of get the supplies back, because, I mean, the guy just spent three weeks in a dungeon, and he wants some goddamn soft serve. Like, can you blame the guy? All right, so then to answer your question, my thoughts as we approached this camp was like, oh my god, I hope this guy does not try to stab anyone with a fork. Like, just, I've just, I am traumatized by that experience for sure. This guy, like, I, I would stab someone with a fork? No, our last companions just kind of, I was trying to charm some people, and then, then, then they just kind of went and gouged out uh, someone's eyes with a fork. It was very unexpected, and I've been suppressing those emotions since, and it's uh, it's not going well. Well, you should know that I generally don't carry forks, but I do carry a spoon. As odd as it seems, I just can't bear to eat soft serve ice cream just with my mouth, like straight on the thing. It just messes me up. So I always carry a spoon because soft serve is easily my favorite re- re- relaxing, refreshing treat. So I always have a spoon on hand so that I don't have to have it ugh, gross on my lips. I can I can spoon it. But the possibility of me spooning out somebody's eyes is high if you get me agitated enough. Good to know we have a running theme here. And Nicole, as you come upon this uh, sort of open open valley in the middle of these woods where this goblin encampment has set up, what are, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm wondering if I can sneak in there. Is there like a what was so it's a it's an encampment? So supposedly there's tents. Is there like a tent that looks less populated that I might be able to sneak into? Well, why don't you roll your, uh, why don't you roll body for me and let's find out. Okay, and that's 2d6, correct? 2d6s plus your total. Okay, I'm rolling my brand new dice that I bought at Pometaway Games. Please go there. Shameless plug. Um, I got... 7 minus 1, I got a 6. You have a 6. Okay, so... I'm going to say that... You, if you want to can sneak to a less populous tent. However, there is a good chance that someone will hear you at the moment. 
Oh, okay. So I get I get to roll, and then I get the option whether I want to go through with it. Is that a thing? This body roll is basically to see like if you if there was a place and if you could make it to it safely. Okay. Or you gauging good... your own body's potential, basically. Um, how many people could hear me if I did this? I'm going to say just the general, the closest people to the tent. So a couple, basically. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to say, so we don't say YOLO in the, in the ice cream business. We say Froyo. So I'm going to shout Froyo and then I'm going to sneak towards the tent. And Sounds try good. I'm sure the shout will really help with that stealth. <laughs> All right. So you see one of your companions heading towards a more unoccupied tent. So. James, what what is your thoughts on this uh, this new companion of your 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 provider of soft serve sneaking off towards a tent? Well, my first thought is that possibly I'm not going to get the ice cream if I don't join her, um, and that uh, especially because I don't I don't know how is it is it hot in the forest? Is it like a is it like a climate change day, or is it back when things were still normal? Oh God, the, the summer has just killed me. Uh, right now, you got it's very temperate for us. Let's just go with it. it's room temperature. Maybe a cool breeze coming through this, maybe a little cooler. So it's not like you could eat soft serve, but you're not in dire need of the soft serve right now. Okay, okay, but I mean, like, what's the likelihood that whatever supply of soft serve might be available to me is going to melt? Uh, substantially enough that I won't really get a satisfying amount if I don't follow my companion into this tent and be there at the moment that it's recovered. I would say a solid chance. So you should probably probably keep close to your soft serve soft serve supplier. Man, I'm full of alliteration today. <laughs> okay, then I think I'm gonna I'm gonna follow. Wait, it's, you're a her? Is that right? <laughs> um, okay. sure. Oh, you appear, I did not... you appear as though you appear as though. Yeah, you appear appear independently of each person. So whatever gender you think of immediately when you think of an elf, um, yeah, that's that's what I'm appearing to you as. Uh, androgynous and attractive, regardless, is usually uh, how I uh, how I androgynous and or whatever the opposite is, uh, and attractive. So okay, oh, that's I'm the gonna... vibe I go for in real life too. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to follow them into the tent. I'm going to follow them All into right. the tent. So I'll get you to roll your dice then quickly. Uh just give me two rolls of that d6 that you have there and then tell me the total. Um somebody else can roll for me cuz I don't have okay. a, I don't have a dice. I'm on it. Please. Um okay, I got a 3 and a Oh, oh no. Got a 3 and a 6. So nine, what, and then what's your body stat? No, the body on stat is one. So okay. yeah, so ten. So that is, you are like a mouse in a field. That's how stealthy you are right now. You are light footed. No one would notice if they were in front of you. They wouldn't notice how well you're sneaking right now. Mm -hmm. So then so, I get to choose. I get to choose how I sneak. Is that? Is that you right? absolutely can. Okay, so I on that on that note, then what I'm doing is I'm sneaking. And I'm I'm doing so in a way where I'm slightly back, so I can track whether or not any of the other um, uh, what, what were they? Goblins? goblins? No, goblins. goblins. Um, so that I can I can be aware of any of the goblins are alerted, um, and somehow communicate that in advance. Sounds good to me. All right. And what is your plan, Kelly? So they they've already just fucked off. Like yeah, they, they're they're moving towards that tent there. All right. Um, okay, so I'll start following them, and but I want to like, yeah, I want to try to sneak and follow like a, a good distance behind them. Yeah, and see if I can kind of see anything on my way to this tent, like anything that isn't nailed down that I can kind of just snag, put put in my pocket, anything valuable. Okay, sounds good. So now you need to do a body roll. We're doing a lot of body rolls off the go here. Yeah, I don't think my body stat is good. No, I'm at minus one. Uh, so that would be six. Six as well. So now that we have two people that are sneaking and can alert people, I'm going to say that one of the scouts notices the group, except for James's character, who is just invisible to the world right now, but notices the other two sort of sneaking towards the tent and raises the alarm with a sharp cry of, there's the punks right there. 
So uh, I, I immediately stand up to try to divert attention away from at least from Gondelf, but really both of them. And I kind of just start doing, I do the Travolta thing again. And yeah. I, yeah, I'm looking back and forth and I, I, I try to like wander really quickly into kind of the main camp area and go, Oh no. Oh, I'm frightfully lost. Not again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to get back. A swarm of goblins quickly surround uh, Angina. Spears pointed at your throat. You remember that 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 like in uh, I think it's Tangled, that that meme format where they just have all the swords around you. It's like, what's your bad opinion? That one right there. That's what basically is happening with Spears right now, except for the front area where a crowd parts, and a, a slightly larger, larger by goblin standards. So instead of being a whopping Four foot ten, he is now four foot eleven, wearing Shit. wearing a old cow skull as a hat and a staff that is kind of falling apart, but has lots of rattly stuff on it, so it's like really cool to him. He comes towards you and says, "Are you the merchants that we procured these provisions from?" Oh no, sir! I'm no merchant. I'm just a lost traveler. Do you happen to know where I am? I've been separated from my party. I know you're not supposed to separate from your party, but oh, can I please come with you and get out of this temperate sun? And I'm I'm wilting like a flower, and I start fanning myself. Okay, so I'm gonna have you um, roll your special, and while you're rolling your special, just hold on to that total for a second. For the record, yep. if this works, I have a scene written that I can just like read out for him. <laughs> <laughs> down. <laughs> Wait, I'm rolling my my magic, not my psychic. Just scratch out well, ogre special and find ability goblin. Is that underneath the S as well. I thought the special was our magic. Oh well, okay. Just roll your psyche then. All right. Uh, so uh, total that is that's twelve. Twelve. Hold yeah. on to that for me. Yeah. All right. Meanwhile, our other two adventurers have made their way to the tent, where they open the the flaps of the tent and see. A stack of not only their provisions, but other provisions that have been lifted from other adventures, uh, caravans, looted through spoiled bins, all piled up in a sort of haphazard grouping. Hell so yeah, man. You are able to see your own provisions fairly high up on the pile since they're pretty fresh. Still in the ice box, still keeping that soft serve nice and cold. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. what is your plan here? What is your guys' plan for this this l stack of provisions, basically. Um, well, I look over at uh, Sly, oh, James's character, whose name is Sly. Spry Sci Guy. Spry Sci Guy. guy. I look yeah. over at Spry Sci Guy and I say, you know what, Spry? You seem super chill, um, which is an ice cream pun, by the way, in case you didn't catch that. Um, I appreciate you following me into this tent. Um, I'm going to scoop you up some soft serve here, as I, I would, you know, deliver it soft serve wise, but I don't have the equipment, but I'll scoop you out some soft serve here as a, as a thank you. Um, and so I do that, but I just kind of like, I don't have any cones or anything. So I just kind of scoop them into your hand. Is that, is that acceptable? It makes me very uncomfortable because the ice cream is touching my skin. Um, <laughs> and, on, and, and it's so uncomfortable that it's, it's a really a challenge for me not to yelp out in anxiety and frustration, but I managed to, uh, I managed to smother myself by immediately putting it into my mouth and trying to lick it off as quickly as possible. Without your um, spoon. Well, my spoon is in my hand. Cause if I get really frustrated, I start scooping out eyes as I discussed earlier, um, <laughs> oh, no. I, uh, ripping it instinctively. And, um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm putting it in, putting it in my mouth quickly, and then I've, I've wiped my hand away. I am grateful, although it's a complicated feeling because I'm also disgusted and pleased at the same time. Something like when I heard that story earlier that you read. Oh, great. <laughs> <Yeah>. Disgusted <laughs> Perfect. and pleased at the same time? That was what I was going for, so thanks. At All which right. point now that you've given me this ice cream, I do feel a sense of loyalty to you. And since it was so good... Despite how disgusted I was by it, I, I feel some sort of obligation to ensure that others will get to enjoy this treasure as well. Um, so I'm, I'm presently feeling an inclination to help you further, despite the fact that I've gotten what I want. Oh, that's very kind of you. This is a very, uh, very wholesome character. A bit of a change from our last week, so I'm kind of happy about that. All right, now we're going to... 
while you are dealing with the soft screen, because you ate so quickly, I need you to quickly roll me a, a psych roll. If you could just, oh, I guess I'll do that for you. Let's see here. What do we got for a psych roll? Four plus five. Ooh. So let's hold on to that total for a second and switch back to what's happening with Kelly. With so, who? Oh, sorry. Angina, the hey, northern that's, bell. That's right. <laughs> so the goblin shaman upon being entranced by the eloquence of which you speak. He's the kind of goblin who's trying to learn bigger words by reading books, but has has learned the words, but hasn't learned quite how to use them yet. He goes, well, my sweet darling, I'm most pleased that you've at least found yourself stumbling into the camp of a well-versed and educated self, one such as myself. We're, uh, we're currently waiting on some merchants whose provisions we have liberated in the hopes of exchanging trade plans for food. You see some adventurers recently trampled over our fields in the caverns, and as such, our mushroom crops are despoiled for the entire season, and we're at risk of starvation, which is why we've been forced to resort to thievery and hooliganism to feed our village. Oh, Dear sir, the mere mention of hooliganism, I feel like I may faint and I start to wobble on my feet. He's going to attempt to help you up but because he's so short. You just mostly just feel him cup your ass. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I put my hand on his shoulder and kind of steady myself. And oh, oh, I do, I do apologize, sir. Please, please. Uh, may, maybe I can help you. I. Long, long ago, I used to I used to manage my fair share of uh, meal plans in in my village. We did. I, I was in charge of the uh, Wizard Weight Watchers program. Um, do, do you want to show me what you have, and maybe I will uh, help you see if there's a way that we can dole it out equitably among your people and keep everyone alive. Perfect. As this is happening now, James, I need you to describe a more than mildly annoying brain freeze because you ate that soft serve so quickly. You see, it's it's causing a sort of searing pain in your head that you can't quite restrain a noise. So what kind of noise are you making as a result of your brain freeze? Uh, well, as, as it's just pushing up further and further into like, feels like the very center of my head, it's like my vocal cords, my diaphragm, my guts, even my testicles are just sucking up into my body and they're all going up and they're coming out through the frontal thing and the noise is like, ah, it hurts. <laughs> Perfect. So... Now we finally get to bring it all back together with uh, Nicole. You, you've heard this ghastly cry from beside you. What is your solution? You, you realize that this is loud enough that they're going to hear you. So mm -hmm. what, what is your plan here? Um, I feel like I, as much as, you know, he's been a kind friend to me, I feel like I need to um, take... Ooh, sorry, what's in the what is there something in this tent that I can use as like a bludgeon? <laughs> a bludgeon. Okay, well. <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Well, let's see. You don't find anything that you can bludgeon him with per se. Because no, I have a better it, idea. Sorry, oh, you have a better ahead. idea. So what do you go what are you gonna go with instead? <laughs> I'm gonna take I'm gonna wrestle the spoon from his hand and I'm just gonna shove more soft serve in his mouth as a like an attempt to like muffle these sounds that are coming out. Okay, so roll me a body, Nicole, and I'm going to roll James's body here. I'm going to roll for fun. I got a seven. You got a seven. Okay, well, he also got a seven, and in traditional tabletop rules, the defender always wins in a tie. So you both start grappling and fall over, taking down the whole tent with you and causing a dreadful racket. So, as we bring this all back together, goblins are now pointing their spears at the two of you who are sort of tangled in the tent right now, while the shaman keeps, because he believes that you are in danger from these intrepid intruders. Oh, what was that dreadful racket? He has gotten very close to you and waves his 
Radley staff at the massive humans provisions and canvas saying, come out right now, you scallywags. Um, well, I go out quickly, much more fast, much more quickly than the uh, than the the elf that tried to take me down <laughs> and shove more ice cream in my face. And uh, I get out very quickly. And the first thing I do is announce that I saw this suspicious person sneaking into this tent, obviously didn't belong there. And when I came to confront them, they attacked me and threw ice cream in my face. And at which point... I wrestled them to the ground and created this commotion. And they're right inside. They're in there now. They obviously don't belong here. You need to get them. All right. And with your wonderful understanding, because you're using your, your eloquence and intelligence for this, you managed to convince them that you are, you're not an intruder. You were just a, a good Samaritan walking by. And uh, now their spears shift from you to the last writhing mass in the canvas tent. That being gone. Um, so I kind of sense that there's danger, though I can't actually tell. Um, and I do what I do best, and I freeze. That's another, Is ice, that cream another ice cream pun. <laughs> um, It's... All right. So with the spears pointed your throat, the uh, the goblin shaman is getting a little forward at this point. He actually takes your hand and starts dragging you towards this uh, this intruder of theirs. He's he's protecting you. He's a gentleman, you see. And he again points the staff really close to your face, like where it's almost like poking it. And he's like, "Who who are you? Who are you here?" Who me? And I, so he's he's pointing the at Nicole, yeah, at Nicole. A gone, so, at gone. So I I decide to kind of like roll with this, and I'm like, oh, oh, that horrid creature, that horrid creature has followed me all the way from my town. Please, please, let me take it into captivity so that I may bring it back to my village, and it may be punished for the, uh, for the crime of stalking. You see, I attract a lot of stalkers, so and I kind of like run my hands down. His shoulder. All right, and uh, how do you how do you answer these accusations, Nicole? What is your plan here? Um, I need to like do like a hail mary and just assume that Angina is not going to stab me in the back, and I just say, uh, "Well, can you blame me? Have you seen her?" <laughs> and I like kind of like raise my eyebrows and like jerk my head and like. All right. So. Um... I'm gonna need you to roll a understanding for me, please. Come on. Uh, you need to roll an understanding for oh, me? me. Yes. Wait, why? Because you were explaining. You were oh. trying to convince. Uh, I got. I think I'm just normal on that one. Uh, oh no, minus one. I got six. Six. So you're not quite convincing enough to just put this uh this cap of into your possession they're going to continue to interrogate gone they okay. keep jabbing just with the with the stick you know like like that annoying elderly person who keeps like jabbing you in the chest as they're trying to like interrogate you when you're a poor retail worker mm -hmm. it's just like what do you do what is your purpose here are you the merchant um and i yeah no i i'm gonna continue to try and go along with it so i, I say um, oh no, I'm just, I'm just a normal stalker. I've just been stalking this young lady all oh, like hither and thither. I, uh, yeah, I, I watched her leave her, uh, not food court cart, her, uh, house this morning. And, uh, I followed her all the way into these woods and uh, I was hoping that maybe I could get the jump on her in this tent and, uh, and then, uh, here I am here. I just got caught. So uh, if you could just leave me about my stalking ways, that would be great. Okay, now you can roll an understanding for me quickly. Oh. Uh, oh, okay. I got a nine. A nine. Okay. So now that the story's sort of been corroborated, the Golden Shaman seems a little more willing to just sort of let it all go and help his new friend, Angina, here by putting you into her possession. So they tie you up 
pretty roughly and uncomfortably, and they uh, they basically just give the rope to Angina and say, "Do with this what you would." I grab the rope kind of confusedly, and I'm like, "Oh no, a rope will not do! Oh no, this androgynous elf is an escape artist. We will need." A cage. In fact, the smallest cage that you can find that sh it will still fit in, because I, I I want I want them to be punished. Well, my dear Angina, we are not barbarians, us goblins. We are simply agrarian folks. We don't carry cages and whatnot. So I'm afraid a rope will have to do. All right, we'll just put some extra ropes of chains on if you can. Darling, so one puts a, a, loop, a loose loop around your neck, and it does. It's not even a slip nor anything. It's just like a leash, and okay. hands it uh, the second rope as if that will help somehow. I tie it tightly around her neck. <laughs> so I have just finished studying um, in Wizard University about the uh, um, how the Northerners used to um, enslave certain races and i just like roll my eyes and i go well, well this isn't problematic at all <laughs> a northern bell with a rope around my neck this seems fine um but i would just make that sarcastic witty comment and i make no other complaints all right on that note then we will end today's episode because you are being led into captivity oh, or rather yeah. possession of angina Stay tuned next time. Neat. So did I just sneak away? I just snuck away. Nobody was paying attention to me. I had like a ten secret thing. I just snuck away. I I got my spoon. <laughs> I'm good. I did love your character a lot. It was it was a great character. I wanted to do more with it, but unfortunately, short on time. But I I, I wanted to let you know that I really did appreciate the. Uh, the character i had plans for it <laughs> it was it was fun i've never done it before i'm i'm happy i had the experience you did great you were very expansive so well done thank you very much for your time there i just hope i didn't redline your audio too much when i had that brain freeze <laughs> it's all good if you if you had heard the audio from our show so far like that redline just brings you up to average so <laughs> okay I'll, I'll, this is all i'll say no notes <laughs> Um, James, did you have anything you wanted to plug before we wrap up here? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, if anyone is interested in what I am doing, if they feel like uh, possibly they're um, smarter smarter than Kelly and want to give it a round, uh, they can they can go check out uh, jameswjester.com, my podcast. Um, I think it is more, maybe much more approachable than Kelly made it seem. At least I hope so. Oh God! Um, but Only because uh, yeah, I'm dumb, everyone. His podcast is great. Uh, you can go to jameswjester.com or check out Adventures of the Mind on YouTube. It's also on Spotify and iTunes and all the rest of that. And um, that's basically all. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, but those uh, platforms are toxic and bad for your brain, and none of us should really be on them. But if it's your thing then follow me there. Um, and that's all. And I really appreciate, uh, I appreciate you having me on. I had a lot of fun and it was a cool, cool experience. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Um, you're, yeah, you're a great guest and an all around fun guy. Hey. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, in addition to all those other platforms, they can catch you as a regular contributor on Fox news. Am I remembering correctly? <laughs> Uh, you know, when I, uh, I know, uh, I actually got an email recently from somebody who had said that, that they got asked to be on Fox News or something. And uh, then they watched my video and they had decided they were, they were like, wow, you did a really good job. On. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, but yeah, no, I was on Fox News once. I made a trip report about it. It was a weird experience. Holy crap! What a weird experience. But that's a that's a whole other story. People can check another it out on my website. Story for another day. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, uh, Nicole, what do you say we end the show with uh, a little bit of um, music trivia? Oh boy. Okay. Here we go. Let's do it. So, you you guys know the band Corn, right? Mm hmm. I do. Yeah. So quite recently, Corn got like it's been a while since they released an album, isn't it? 
It's been a very long time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so the uh, the latest scuttlebutt is that they got back into the studio, all of them, and they're like, "Yeah, man, we're gonna we're gonna be back better than ever." And so, you know, a record label put some money down on them and was willing to say, "Okay, you know what? We will give you basically infinite money, infinite studio time. Please just, you know, give us that freak on the shit back. Like, you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna really brighten up 2020." Too realistically and so they were in the studio for a while and you know the person signing the checks went down and was wanted to see how they were doing and they were really confused because all they had was like just this like mess of synths um like there was no there was no analog instruments except for like a xylophone and it was just like this incredibly bizarre experimental avant-garde mess. It was not even remotely like tough or anything. And so the, this producer was like, okay, guys, like, explain what's going on. Um, wh- where, where's, where's the anger? Where's the tasty licks? You know, where's the pounding drums? And they were like, listen, we have utter certainty that this is going to be the future of music. We are going to be the crest of that wave this weird dreamy synth glockenspiel um house and you just have to trust us on this and the producer who's already sunk a bunch of money into this is just completely flabbergasted and is like well like you guys understand how much money like we we entrusted you with this and this is this is garbage like what makes you say that music is going to go in this direction and the the lead singer was like oh you know what we got we got a gut feeling this is a gut feeling that's it my guy goes yeah you'll trust us and the producer throws a fit and kicks them out and fires them and says you're not getting another cent i'm not going to spend all of our money on this absolute boondoggle just based on corn's utter hunches <laughs> 